Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. Here we are once again. Studio 3, Saturday night, 9 o'clock on Manx Radio. H and Chris with you with Jumping In, the best in modern and contemporary jazz. And of course you know that already, don't you? Uh, indeed they do. And yes, welcome along to this week's Jumping In. And we're into December, can you believe it? Uh, great to catch a live, a real London Jazz Festival this year. And yes. we'll be bringing you plenty of interviews in future editions of the show. But for now, before the C word becomes all enveloping, let's catch up on some of the recent releases. So, what's been behind your first four Advent Doors of the month, H, other than little bottles of scotch or chocolates or whatever you have? Yeah, cheese it was last year. Yeah. Uh, some wonderful British conversations with the evergreen Graham Collier. Uh, Bill McHenry, he's got some Ghosts of the Sun, also a, yeah, a cracker from Prism. And from me, well, a ride through history, a quick turn, and we find out where the streets lead to. But to start, here's Nina, Nina, from... Remy LeBeuf.
Fantastic stuff. I'm glad to say that the big band is alive and kicking. Following on from his big band debut, Assembly of Shadows, which was one of my uh, favourite big band releases of 2019, saxophonist and composer Remy Leboeuf is back with Architecture of Storms, a great 30-piece band, only released at the start of, the, of this month, and it's already getting repeated plays from me. A great tight rhythm section writing and guest soloists such as Dinah Stevens and uh, trumpeter Philip Dizak, uh, working with his twin brother Pascal in the LeBeuf Brothers Group and with the Lincoln City Orchestra with the Winter Marsalis and also in Linda May Hans O Group. He's keeping himself very busy. Architecture of Storms is out now. It is indeed great stuff and again the big band scene it is amazing how vibrant it is and again we're coming up in the next few weeks we'll be speaking to the wonderful uh, Catherine Windfelt uh, in Ronnie's who is there not with a big band in this particular instance with her sextet and a very nice sound it made as well but she we featured her before on the programme and she's got a brand new one out which didn't, we didn't even know about plus another one uh, which she had with us and uh, we'll be featuring both of those I featured just a, a taster of the new one last week wonderful stuff wonderful stuff she really is sort of uh, again it's that mixture of a bit of the old tradition with some new sounds some new voicings really is it's amazing how vibrant the big band scene is this next one's going uh, back a wee bit it's dipping we were down in town and of course if you're down in town that means you can get to some of the record emporiums that still exist and have a mooch around and uh, yeah a shout out for Ray's jazz of course these days in foils on Charing Cross Road and uh, Frank, who's often there, I think, who runs it, always wonderful. And yeah, a browse through the racks never fails to delight one way or another. You'll always, always unearth some little gems or something of interest. Bill McHenry, I've enjoyed this sax player's work for quite some time. And in latter years, he worked in the latter years of Paul Motion's life. He worked with Paul Motion. Ben Monder, of course, uh, one of the great guitar stars. He was very much on the scene with that unique, quite sort of ghostly, atmospheric, ambient sound he quite often favours. Reed Anderson on bass from the... Bad Plus, of course, an album called Ghosts of the Sun. Let's hear a track now.
great stuff. I enjoy that, the inimitable sound of Paul Motion at the drums. Bill McHenry, the uh, sax player from uh, Maine in the United States, has been around for quite some time and has played often uh, with Paul Motion and played at the Village Vanguard a lot. I've never seen him live, unfortunately. I've always fancied seeing him live. I don't know whether he plays much this side of the pond. He's got a dozen or more albums under his own name. I reckon I've probably heard round about half of them. Uh, but always an interesting player, a uh, nice sound. He likes, quite often favours these small group settings, as I say, there with Reed Anderson bass, Paul Motion drums, Ben Monda out of the guitar track called La Fuerza. But if you've never seen him and you see one kicking around in second-hand racks or in a bargain bin somewhere, pick him up and check him out. Now, another horn player uh, and one who refused to slow down at all through the pandemic is uh, New York saxman James Brandon Lewis. His album Molecular, which came out in October 2020, made many of the best of the year list despite being a very late showing. And he's not been resting on his laurels this year either. A live album released in June, an October release, Code of Being, which was certainly too late for the Jazz Boys best of lists, but is being highly marked by lots of people. And this release from May, which wasn't, and indeed did make it onto a number of people's lists. From Jessup Wagon, here's the title track. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
described by the New York Times as a jazz saxophonist in his 30s, raw tone but measured doesn't sound steeped in current jazz academy values. There's an independence about him, and I couldn't agree more with that. It's really a Jessup Wagon and its successor, Code of Being, which I'll uh, save for another show, just scrape the surface of this fantastic, muscular and inventive player. Check him out if you haven't already come across him. And the album, incidentally, is dedicated to George Washington Carver, a true Renaissance man. If you haven't heard of him, he was a black man born into slavery who went on to become a director of agricultural research and is uh, known as the Peanut Man for his multiple uses of this versatile legume, although he did not invent peanut butter, despite it being reported in several cases. This is Jane Ara Bloom, and you're listening to Jumpin' In with Chris and H on Manx Radio.
terrific stuff. One of my uh, favourite groups on the European scene. I don't know, again, if they ever have played in Britain. I've never seen them listed anywhere. I've certainly never seen them live. I'd very much like to see them live. To the best of my knowledge, that's the last album they brought out, I think, Prism 5, uh, which was 2009, but I stand corrected that they've got more than that. I think there's about five albums in total, live, as you could gather, at the Opera de Lyon in 2009. Sounds like a great gig as well, and that track called Reflection. You might have gathered there's more than the usual. So Prism themselves, a trio, uh, Pierre de Pethman on uh, piano and Rhodes there. That'll please our Luxembourg listener. Uh, Christ, uh, Christoph Wallem on bass, uh, Benjamin uh, Genoc on the drums, also with the wonderful Rosario Giuliani on alto and uh, Manu Kadir on guitar. Prism. Uh, check them out there again if you see them. That's Prism with a Y, just in case you're wondering. And uh, yes, five albums, correct. Prism, second rhythm on tour, time and five and uh, all of those uh, members of the band are uh, of course band leaders in their own right and i've been playing large and small ensemble from uh, from the pianist uh, also uh, from the bass players uh, time album great great musicians lovely stuff why they're not better known than they are i do not know uh, next from me a wisconsin trumpeter composer and educator paul dietrich paul has been the leader of his own quintet since back in 2012 let's hear a quick turn from the group's 2017 album focus this track featuring guest vocalist katie ernst Thank you. 
Yes, I like that very much with an almost cinematic quality Paul Dietrich quintet there with Quick Turn, taken from the group's 2017 album Focus, available now on the Ears Eyes record label. Terrific stuff. You're listening to Jumping In, Chris and myself, H, with you here on Max Radio. Of course, the best in modern and contemporary jazz every Saturday night, same time, same place, 9 o'clock, you know where to come. And you can also catch the podcast as well. Just go to the Manx Radio site or use your usual podcast provider, but you can go to the Manx Radio site if you like and just click on the podcast. You'll find us there as well to listen whenever you want. And I know people do. Uh, Graham Collier, a man of firsts. We had the great pleasure of seeing him in the mid-1980s with his hoarded dreams Sweet, one of the first openly gay jazz musicians on the scene and a man of lots of firsts. He was the first British jazz musician to study at the Berklee School of Music and also the first British jazz graduate or diplomat as he was. This was back in the 1960s and 68. He got the first Arts Council grant in jazz for a new composition and he was also established the first jazz degree course at a British conservatoire, becoming head of jazz at the Royal Academy of Music. Despite all that, for many, I dare say, he sailed under the radar, perhaps not as well known as he should be, like so many. Michael Garrick, we referred to, perhaps even Stan Tracy, maybe, who knows. But you can enjoy some of his great music. There's a lovely new one just come out, Graham Collier, British Conversations, featuring Harry Beckett and the guitarist Ed Spade. Recorded live, again, not by British, but by Swedish radio, live in concert, February 27th, 1975, in Stockholm. Fantastic lineup this band, and uh, here's part two of the suites called Clear Moon.
terrific stuff. I've uh, really been enjoying that one. I haven't actually heard all the album yet. Another one of those albums that was playing in the shop when we were in there. And uh, again, uh, Frank, I think it is, at uh, Raised Jazz was saying, you know what, it's been one of my favourites. been really enjoying that album the last uh, week or two, working in the shop. And uh, I know you've been raving about it as well, having heard a bit of it. And so, yes, yeah, got to be worth checking out. British Conversations, uh, Graham Collier featuring Harry Beckett and Ed Spate with the uh, a lot of the Swedish musicians as well. I'm not even going to attempt half of them, because uh, <laughs> I'll just get them wrong in any case. Suffice to say, a fine band, I think you'll agree. And yeah, it's celebrating the great music and another one of those unsung heroes of British jazz uh, who achieved so much and yet perhaps never quite got all the recognition that he might, might have had or should have had, perhaps, uh, Graham Collier. Of course, a great jazz educator. Not only did we see Horde of Dreams and Horde of Dreams live at Bracknell, you can hear us whooping in the audience if you're eagle-eared. You but are, we yeah. also saw him Go with a rehearsal band back <laughs> in 1983, again at Bracknell, which went on to become none other than Loose Tubes, great bit of jazz history. And there's a whole load of his educational stuff that was out there as well. Well, that's about it for this week's show. Next week, we'll be looking at Jazz Goes Pop with a selection of jazzy reinventions of the popular song. And until then, we'll leave with a track from the latest release from Edition Re- Records artist Slowly Rolling Camera, Where Streets Lead. The band is the brainchild of the label owner and uh, pianist and composer Dave Stapleton and for this release of the core trio of Dave on piano Elliot Bennett on drums Derry Roberts on synths has been augmented by a cast of label thousands including Mark Lockhart on saxes Stuart McCullough on guitars Jasper Hoiby on bass Vernoroy Puyola on trumpet as well as a string octet Sachel Vandoni on vocals and Chris Potter on sax Whew. here's the title track we'll see you next week pop pickers look after yourselves Thank you.